The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 27 to 38. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. Our Gospel today marks a turning point in the story of Mark's Gospel. Right from the first verse of, of the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, the author declares the identity of Jesus. It, he writes, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But until now in the Gospel, there have been no clear statements from Jesus or his disciples about who Jesus really is. Today's passage changes that. It is a defining moment where the truth of Jesus' identity is revealed. As we see, Jesus first asks his disciples to key questions in our reading. First, who do people say that I am? And who do you say that I am? The first question shows us how the crowds perceive Jesus. They offer guesses. John the Baptist, Elijah, or one of the prophets. And these are not random answers. They reflect the expectations of the people who have seen Jesus' powerful works and teachings. He's healed the sick, cast out the demons, and taught with authority. It's no wonder they thought that he was someone important, like a prophet, or even a figure like John the Baptist or Elijah, both of whom were expected to return in some form to herald the coming of God's kingdom. But then Jesus asks the more personal question, who do you say that I am? This is where Peter responds, you are the Messiah. Now Peter's answer is correct, but it reveals a deeper expectation, an expectation shaped by hope and longing for a savior who would set God's people free. Yet while Peter sees Jesus as the Messiah, his understanding of what that means is incomplete. And Jesus knows this. And so he begins to teach Peter and the disciples and those that were listening what being the Messiah really means. He tells them that as the Christ, he will suffer, be rejected and killed, and on the third day rise again. This was not what the disciples or the people expected. They were looking for a Messiah who would overthrow the Roman rulers and restore Israel's kingdom. Instead, Jesus offers a path of suffering and sacrifice. Now, Peter objects to this, because who would want their leader to suffer and die? But Jesus uses that as a teaching moment to make something very clear, that if anyone wants to follow him, they must be prepared for a journey that will not be easy. It's a journey of self-denial and sacrifice. Now, in Mark's Gospel, discipleship is defined by two powerful words, follow me. Unlike John's Gospel, which we've spent a lot of time in this summer, which emphasized belief and abiding in Jesus, here in Mark, the call is a call to action. It's about movement action and commitment. Jesus doesn't just ask for our belief, he asks us to follow him. And we are invited to recognize Jesus in our lives, not just intellectually, but in a transformative way. Following Jesus means walking in his footsteps, even when the path is difficult or leads to our cross. In our reading today, it's also the first time in Mark's Gospel that Jesus tells his followers how the whole story will unfold. And in doing so, he also lays out for them the cost of discipleship. He says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. As I said, this is a crucial moment in Mark's Gospel. It ties back to the very first verse of the Gospel 
where, again, Jesus was introduced as the Messiah. And it also points forward to the ending, where his identity is fully revealed through his death and resurrection. Mark's gospel, in its fullness, leaves us, the readers and hearers, with the question, what will we do with the knowledge of the resurrection? Will we follow Jesus or not? And this is the, an important takeaway for us today. Jesus' question to his disciples in our reading is the same question that Jesus asks each of us. Who do you say that I am? Imagine yourself in Peter's shoes. And Jesus, standing right in front of you, asks you that question. Rob, who do you say that I am? How we answer this question shapes our lives. Even when Jesus invites us to acknowledge him for who he is and to follow him, it's not a one-time decision. It's a daily choice, an ongoing process of learning what it means to be a Christian. If we look at the gospel stories, we see that Jesus, Jesus often teaches through unexpected encounters. People come to him seeking help, healing, and answers. And Jesus responds with the good news. His life is full of examples of how to live the gospel message. And this is how we learn as well. When we follow Christ in our daily lives, we rarely know ahead of time that we will have the opportunity to demonstrate our faith in a daily encounter. This is the awesome challenge of living faithfully in the everyday. Now, in today's passage, Jesus gives us some challenging but vital instruction about how we can live a life following him. When he tells the crowd, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. He is asking us to reorient our lives. To deny ourselves means to remove ourselves from the center of our lives and to place God and the gospel there instead. This is no easy task, because it requires a shift in our thinking, in our motivations, and in how we live. Taking up our cross isn't just about enduring hardship. It's about, it's about embracing the way of life that Jesus modeled, a life of love, humility, service, and sacrifice. Following Christ means making more and more room for God's presence and God's will in our lives. Jesus doesn't call perfect people, but those willing to grow and be transformed. This is the heart of discipleship. Just as the disciples learned about Jesus as they journeyed with him, we too learn more about being a Christian as we follow Jesus day by day. Our discipleship is an ongoing process of transformation where we become more like Christ by following his example of being true to who God created us to be. So from our reading today, we're invited to reflect on the same fundamentally important question that Jesus asked his disciples. Who do you say that I am? How we answer that question shapes not only our beliefs, but our entire lives. And to decide to follow Jesus as our Messiah is not just the decision we make once, it's a daily opportunity to walk in his footsteps, to embrace his way of love, sacrifice, and transformation. Each day offers us the choice. Will we carry our cross and follow him today? Will we let his life shape ours today, letting go of ourselves to make room for God? The path is challenging, but the reward is a life that is true, abundant, and eternal. What will you choose today? I'd now like to invite you to join with me in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together in one, into one bread, 
So let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. The ministry of your church extends across all borders, from nearby neighbors to far and distant, distant countries. We pray today for Todd, Bishop of Huron, Anne, our Metropolitan and Acting Primate, Christopher, National Indigenous Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our Diocese of Huron, we pray for the parishes in the Kent Deanery, for their clergy and people. Embolden our church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel and equip the baptized to proclaim your extravagant love for the whole world. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. As we continue through the season of creation, we rejoice in the works of your hands. We pray for the natural world, Make rivers and lakes, oceans, and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect water sources and strengthen those who defend them. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Interceding on behalf of the vulnerable, we pray for people around the world. Inspire all rulers and governing authorities with your justice. Guide the work of legislators and public officials that they advocate for the well-being of those they serve. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Helper to those in need, you lift up those who are oppressed. We pray for the sick and those in need of prayer. In our own parish this week, we pray especially for Normand and Aster, Marion, Bob, Stella, Jenny, Kaylee, Janice, Andrew, John, Doreen, Mary, and Mary Rose. We pray for those experiencing ongoing long-term health concerns, praying for Pat, Carol, Karen, Tracy, Brian, Alex, Vicki, Miriam, Max, Norma, Charlotte, Aubrey, Erlina, Claude and Carol, Marie, Kim, Janet, Jan, Charlene, Bud, Amy, Betty, Ray, Jason, Mark, Kath, Jim and Odile. Heal and comfort those we hold in our hearts and those who have asked for our prayers. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation and all those gathered together in worship. We pray for our baptismal candidate, Blair, for her parents, grandparents, and extended family. Help us all to be faithful examples of fellowship, worship, and service to others so that we all live in the promises made in baptism. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him into new life, we give thanks for the life and witness of Florence Smith, and we pray for the repose of her soul. We pray for her children, Joanne, Pam, Barbara, and Robin, her numerous grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and all her extended family during their time of grief. We give thanks for all your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. 
the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.